Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so you'll see my new videos as they become available. I like to do mixed media artwork, altered books, watercolor painting, drawing, and many other different types of crafts. I've been inspired by many people such as Tamara Lepore, Jane Davenport, Tisha Moore, Lori Marie Jenkins, and many, many others. And hopefully I can be some inspiration to you as well. The most important part with our art is to take what we learn from others and um, be inspired by it and then make it your own, be creative with it, and uh, use your art as therapy. So um, come and soothe your heart with some art and let's get started. I've been asked by several people how I created this altered book page layout so I'm going to show a quick tutorial just to show the basic process. You can decorate your page and do your backgrounds and focals any way you'd like but it'll show you how I did this part and this part. So let's get started. First you'll need a book that you're working in and all a book to alter and you'll want to glue together, Mod Podge or Matte Gel Medium together, um, four sets of pages. I'm going to call this my first set because I'm starting this in the very beginning of this book, but this would be a set. And a set would be two or three pages glued together to make it strong. So here's one set, two set, three sets, and I'm going to call this my fourth set. So if it was in the middle of the book, you'd need four. So go ahead and glue your pages together, and then I'll show you how to do the process. I created this template out of cardboard by just drawing a swervy line. And this is what you're going to use to make your three gradient pages. And the first one, on this one, my pages are going this way and this way, so it's it's very balanced. You can cut it out that way. On this book, I'm doing one wave going this way, one wave going the opposite way. Oops, that's stuck together. So you can do it any way you want, but what you'd want to do is make your swerve out of a cardboard that you can keep as a template and use over and over again. And then on this page is going to be a background page for your first page spread. And so you want to start your you want to start your swerves far enough in that it gives you something to turn, but then it also gives you enough room to make another one. So what I like to do is go to the second page and I start there and kind of go out to the edge here so you can go into this edge and draw a line with your pencil okay Let's do that again okay so now you have your swerved edge and what you're going to do is take your scissors and cut that out. You don't have to be super precise because you are going to cover your pages with other papers. They may overlap the edge if you want a rough edge or they may be smooth if, when you trim it at the end. So don't worry about it too much in this beginning process. Okay, so now you've got that page and you're going to go for your second one. And if you're going to do the same and just move it over a bit like this where it's even or you can flip it where it's swervy and opposite either way works out just fine I think for this one I'm going to go ahead and do an even one so you put this down and you trace it again and you cut it out want to keep this because that might be an interesting 
tag or a border or a flip up or even a pocket you could make that into a really cool pocket so keep that keep everything okay so on this one i've got my lines going parent per bleh, i can't say that parent dip whatever they're going together okay so now i've got my lines so here's your first page spread that flips over and you're going to decorate this second page spread and then this back page this set and this set are actually going to be glued together to make your pocket for your for this pocket we're going to use a cd mailer so what you're going to do for that where your pocket is going to be you kind of decide do you want your pocket up here do you want it down here I kind of like it right in where that swerve is and you're going to put it give it some room here because you want your pages to be able to close really flat if you put it right next to the spine right next to the crease it's going to give your make your pages lift up a little bit so move it over move it out just a little bit and then take your pencil and draw on your mailer where that's going to go and you guessed it we're going to cut that out I'm going to cut that mailer just like that. Okay, now it has the shape and you can line it up. There you go. You can't see it. It's, it's gone. And that's going to be where you're going to glue it down and then glue those two pages together. And now you're going to have a nifty place to stick a tag. You're going to have a pocket back here to stick a tag. I can say this is a tag. It's going to be able to have a tag that's going to pull out from that spot. Okay. So now what you do is just decorate your page, decorate your second page, glue this down where it's going to go and glue those pages down. But before you do that, you do want to do decorate this edge or color this edge. So that when this is closed, see how you can see that you kind of want it to blend in with this page or be completely different so it stands out. If you like that little edge different, make this in a color like green, make this in a color like yellow. So when it's closed, do each page a different color. You really see a variation in this book. They're pretty much all the same colors. You can still see where that line is, but if you had them different colors, it would even stand out more. On this second page here, this is done with a cardboard heart that I distressed. I put glass beads around it. I hung some beads on the end of the heart and I have it placed so that you can see it. It pops out. It sticks out from that first page because when that first page is closed because it's only it's short and it shows that part of the second page, put something there that's going to that's going to pop out and peek out. It can be anything up. It could be a focal point, it could be a face, it could be anything that you want to put there. But it's that's kind of the point is it's kind of a tucked back hidden page where when you open it, it reveals what's underneath. So that's basically how that's done. And then you're going to decorate a tag to slip into your envelope underneath. Okay, so do your focals the way you want. With this particular one, I think I'm going to go with a a zen kind of a background so in here i'm going to have these zen rocks sticking out and then when you open it you're going to see the full rocks and when you lay down your your base layer of papers your collage papers and do your painting and your distressing and all the different things that you do to decorate it just be sure that you put something underneath here when you're working on it and you can overlap those papers like on this one, it's a really rough jagged edge because I overlapped the papers. I didn't trim it. See how it's jagged and this one is jagged. I left it that way on purpose. But you can lay down your papers and when they dry, you can flip over to this backside to see where your line is and you can cut it smooth again. So if you want it smooth, cut it smooth. Same thing with this one. Decorate it. Cut that edge smooth again. If you want it jagged, overlap your pages just a little bit when you glue them down you know your underpants pieces and 
overlap them a little bit so they're sticking out and leave it jagged. It's totally up to you. It's an, it's an open book, so to speak, for decorating. If you want to see the process of how to do a background, how to do um, do that, I can do another video on that. Leave a comment below. This is basically just to show this technique, and when I'm done with this page, I'll come back and show you the completed pages so that you'll see the finished product. But basically, it's all done from a CD mailer, a piece of cardboard that I keep as my template because I do a lot of things with this. And then I go ahead and do my altered book page. So now I've got my focal page done and I'm going to go ahead and show you on this second page here um, how to overlap along that border edge. So what you want to do, which most of us who do art uh, altered books already know how to lay down a base of paper, but you're going to cut your little pieces or tear your little pieces of anything, um, scrapbooking paper, book text that you've, pages you've removed from your books, old music sheets, um, tissue paper, coffee filters, anything that you like to use as your base layer, you're going to go ahead and put those down. When you come up to this edge, you want to just um, have that rough edge, the torn edge, to just kind of go over that edge that you've created, that uh, swerve that you've cut out. You just want to lay it down to um, overlap it just a little bit and you're going to end up with a really nice unusual funky rough textured edge over that edge. If when you complete it you get it all done you want to take scissors and trim it smooth you can do that. But for now just go ahead and lay it down. Here's what it looks like when it's done. You complete your page covering it with um, your base layer and then there's your edge so it shows the edges where you've kind of gone over it a little bit and then when you flip back to that other side you can trim those off and now what we're going to do is we're going to make our uh, cardboard heart and the heart you want to have any you can make a heart you can make anything you want but on my page I'm going to go ahead and show you with a heart and I'm using cardboard and you want to have it on that second layer on the part that sticks out of your swerved edge so that when you close the two pages you're going to see half of it peeking out and it I'm kind of showing you there that the heart is going to be peeking out of the edge so to do that you take a thick piece of cardboard and you draw on your cardboard a basic heart shape about the size that you think you want it to be. And then you can kind of hold it up there and see if it's the right size. But you just basically sketch out a heart. Um, there, see it's kind of fits perfectly in that spot. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a second one because I'm using this focal of this fairy and I love how her hands are and it, I can envision that to have a heart underneath it. So. I'm going to cut out another cardboard heart that's going to fit underneath her hands. I'll take an X-Acto knife and I will put her down on a mat and I will trim out her hands just around them, leaving them still attached so that I can create this three-dimensional heart and then slip it underneath her hands before I glue her down to the page. So I'm drawing my two hearts on my piece of thick corrugated cardboard. It needs to be corrugated and then I've cut them out. So now I've got my two cardboard pieces. And I like how the direction is going, the corrugation is going different directions because that's going to make them each look their own unique way because the way the corrugation is, when you tear off these little sheets off the top layer to show that corrugated roughly edge underneath, it's going to be going different directions underneath that. So you want to just kind of go around the edges and you want to tear off little pieces of paper here, there, and everywhere. Kind of use your finger to get in there and just peel it off and look how that shows that corrugation underneath. It's really pretty. Now when we add some paint layers and some textures it's, and distress it, it's going to look really beautiful. So you just tear your edges 
until you get it the way that you want it to look. And this other one, the corrugation goes the opposite way. I don't even mind that pattern that's on there from the cardboard itself, whatever the packaging was that I cut this piece of cardboard from. It doesn't bother me because it just adds more interest. And you're going to paint over it and add things so it won't show. Or, or if it does, it's just going to add more texture and depth. But I love tearing that piece, that top layer off, and showing that corrugation underneath. I really like that direction. So when you lay it out, lay out your cardboard, be sure you know which way the corrugated part inside is going, and that's going to tell you what what it's going to look like. Your lines from the corrugation are either going to be horizontal or vertical. So you just pull those pieces off. I'm taking a point of a scissors and going right in the middle and kind of just starting a little piece so that I can tear some and distress a little bit in the middle as well as the outside edges. Oh, it's pretty. I like it. Kind of just adds interest. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take um, paints and things and you're going to you're going to paint this and distress it and wrap it with wire and make it look really interesting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take some paint and we're going to put some paint in our palette and just acrylic paint and it can be the inexpensive kind and you're going to do a dry brush technique. So what that means is getting just a little bit of the paint, picking up a little with your brush that's dry and then you just start to paint with it with a really light touch light bits of paint. Do your edges of your heart too because they're going to show. You don't need to do the back side because it'll get glued down. But you just do a light layer. And it's just like your your um, page layouts that you do. The more that you do, the more layers you add to it, the more distressing you add to it, the better it's going to look. So you kind of just play around with it and decide what you want to do. And it's kind of one of those processes that you decide as you go along. And it kind of just comes to life and takes shape. So I'm going to lay down a base color, and this time I'm using yellow ochre. And I like that black that's on there from the advertising. It kind of shows through a little bit, and that's kind of neat looking. And you don't have to worry about it getting down into those corrugated spots, because sometimes the cardboard look just makes it look a little more distressed. So you don't have to worry about getting it covered way deep down unless you want that look. It's up to you. But I kind of like to leave those spots to be natural colored, the cardboard colored in those spots that you've torn. It looks really pretty. Okay, now I'm going to take another color. and do the dry brush technique. And you don't even need to wash out your brush or anything. You can just pick up some paint and keep going. And again, light, light, light hand. You use a feather light touch with this dry brush technique. See how it makes it look streaky. It makes it look old and weathered and distressed. It's so pretty. But your paintbrush is totally dry and you don't pick up very much paint on the end of your brush, just a little bit and then light-handedly go across each one and do several layers of color. Now I'm going against the grain here and that looks really neat. You can go up and down or you can go against the grain. It just makes it look really cool and distressed. and you just kind of play around with it. You don't want to cover up your first layer too much, so you want some of it to show through. And I want it to have just a tinge of a really deep red, so now I'm adding a, a dark red. So that yellow ochre shows through and the darker brown shows through. 
And now you have just a hint of red. Looks really pretty. I'm going to do both of them the same. She's going to be holding one and the other one will be peeking out. Okay. Now the next step, I'm going to use a stencil with a swirl and some gold modeling paste to just add some more dimension and something else interesting to look at. And again, you don't have to do a heart. You can do anything you want. This is just what I'm creating for this page, and it's just to give you the technique ideas more than you actually copying what I'm doing. You can copy it if you want to. It doesn't matter to me. The modeling paste through the stencil and then it just adds a, a little bit of something. Oh, I love that swirl on there. It makes it look just really interesting and fun. That gold modeling paste is really pretty. Okay. Those look really nice. I think I'm going to let those dry. Now I've gone ahead and I've wrapped each one with a very thin gold wire. And then I went around the edges also with um, some Stabilo and maybe even some Tim Holtz Distress Ink. I used some a heart-shaped brad that I stuck through and then hung on a chain a charm of a filigree heart for some interest. And so it's wrapped with wire and then it's got a charm hanging from a chain. And I just use um, anything that I have like duct tape or electrical tape to tape down the wire in the back just to keep it stable. Pretty. So that's where that's going to be and then the charm is going to hang down from the heart and see how you can see the heart peeking through from the first page but then when you open it it reveals the rest of the heart I just love that it's really really fun and different okay now I have my focals down here's how it looks when it's all completed I have glued down my focal I cut her hands around her hands and put the three-dimensional heart underneath her hands. I added fibers for her hair. I've gone around the edges and I've done stabilo and some dots. That last third page, I went ahead and painted the edge of that last page in just a matte black because there is black on my page where the circles are is it's got black and then it's got the black stabilo and I just thought that the black along the edge would really make that heart and the shape of the page stand out and I really like that I like that it's different instead of the same colors again it kind of just adds some interest I had fun doing this focal page I did a bird over a butterfly, and I always use um, watch pieces like from um, Vogue magazine. I cut out every watch ad. This was a napkin, and I put that down on her head for the bird's nest, and then I went over it with some paint pen to make the eggs look more realistic and stand out. And that was a butterfly that I cut in half to make it look like she has butterfly wings coming out of her shoulder. I only needed one wing. And then when you flip it, I like it. You still see the hand from the first page. So here is our CD holder that's going to go underneath and hide behind it for our hidden tag. 
And this was a coaster that someone mailed to me. Um, it's a really thick, hard coaster that came from a restaurant or a bar, and it fits perfectly into this CD holder, so I'm going to go ahead and decorate that and use that for my tag. So you just line it up, and you're, I'm going to glue that down, and then the tag will pull out from behind. I'll decorate both sides. I love that shape along the edge. I'm gonna you could put something else here, another pocket made out of a toilet paper roll or something else, but I think for my own preference for this page, I'm gonna leave it just this time. I do each one different. But this time I'm just going to have the one spot with a large tag. So here's my completed page. Let me zoom out here so you can see it a little bit better. I put a really nifty gem inside the watch, which looks super cool. And then I did some more Stabilo. I added some gold foil to the page. And then there's the wire wrapped heart shows. And then this little bottle, when you flip the page, there's your um, my fairy. And then for the fairy, I used leaves for her wings. And there's your dangle heart. And then along the edge of the tag is a little glass bottle with glitter in it. And it says pixie dust. And you pull that, and here is your tag, and it is another fairy. I just stenciled on it, and I used material for the background. And then on the back side, I did a collage. It's got a bird at the bottom from a napkin, and then um, a poem that came from a 17th century book. And so that's what slips in that hidden pocket behind. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you got some kind of inspiration to maybe take and do something in one of your art journals or altered books that um, I hope this gave you some ideas about doing the corrugated hearts wrapped in wire, the, the fancy edge for making that interesting layout with the shortened pages. Um, I hope you found some inspiration in it. and. Enjoy this video. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and maybe it inspired you to do something different in one of your art journals. Art is therapy, so enjoy the process and if there's anything I can help with, please be sure to leave a comment and I'd be glad to respond. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. I have an Etsy account. And then I also have a PayPal me. And so if you feel guided to make a donation to help me along on my art journaling experience and be able to come back and teach more videos, I'm always greatly appreciative of any donation I receive. Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs and I hope you had fun and come back again to see what we do next.